Hey guys, Dimitri here. In this video, we're going to discuss designing UI elements inside Adobe's Illustrator. Illustrator has some uh, great tools for UI design, and in a lot of cases, offers more flexibility than Photoshop. A lot of people, though, are afraid of it because it can be quite intimidating at the beginning. But keep at it, and you will soon find out how powerful it can be. For those of you that are new to the program, you might want to check this video here. It covers the basics and will get you up to speed with the most important concepts of the program. So, there are three main things you need to consider when designing UI elements, and these are the ones I would like to cover here today. The first one is designing with pixels. The first thing we need to make sure of when working on a project is to start with a document that has pixels as a measurement unit. Uh, you might think that no one will forget but if you do forget, it might lead to a lot of work later on. So once we've done that, we need to take care of some more options. We also want to see the pixel grid, so what we need to do is enable the pixel preview here. This will do two things. One, it will give us a pixel preview for our vector designs, and it will also show us the pixel grid once we reach 600%. Very useful when we need to make sure that everything is aligned up correctly. And uh, since we want to work with uh, pixel precision, we need to make sure that this option is enabled. To do that, we click this button here. This also contains a lot of options on how your tool should behave. If something doesn't work the way you want to, then you can change it here. So far I didn't have any issues with the defaults, so I'm just going to leave them as they are right now. This is an Illustrator 2017 version. Before that, we had the Align to Pixel Grid option here. So if you don't have the latest version, make sure to enable this with every new object you create. Now let's go back to the 2017 version. The button next to the alignment option is also really important and it will help us align the objects correctly on our artboard. So let's see how the pixel alignment works. Let's create a rectangle. As you can see, it renders perfectly. One thing to keep in mind though is that uh, once you start adjusting your object, you might need to align your object again. For example, if I add a stroke to my rectangle, the edges get muddy. This is where this button comes in. If I click on it, it moves the rectangle around in order to align it with the pixel grid. And now our edges are sharp again. The same happens when you increase the stroke weight. You need to press this button again and it will line up to the pixel grid. Let's now draw a rectangle with just an outline and see how the alignment works. As you can see, the edge of our rectangle sits in the middle of the pixel grid. If you don't like that and you want your rectangle edges to go to the edge of the pixel grid, then you need to change how the stroke is applied. And it's this second option here in our strokes panel. We have one more option here, which is drawing the stroke outside the rectangle edges. Notice here though that uh, what you will be drawing will be one pixel more than the size you want. So if you want a 10 by 10 pixel icon, you need to set your rectangle as 9 by 9. And that about covers the pixel grid part. Just to summarize, create your document in pixels, enable pixel preview, enable the align art option, and finally, use the align art to pixel grid option as often as needed. Now let's move on to another really important part uh, for UI design. And that is symbols. Think of uh, symbols as a library of reusable elements. Once you create a small element, like an icon, you can save it in the symbols area. And that allows you to reuse it whenever the time comes. So if you have to build a lot of uh, interfaces that use the same elements, having everything as symbols could be very beneficial. As you can see here, I can create an interface element in a few minutes. So that's the first benefit of having symbols. Speed and consistency. Everything has the correct colors, dimensions, and follows the design guidelines. Another great benefit is adjustability. 
So if, for example, you want to create a smaller version of your design, you can just drag a couple of objects around and you're all set. Of course, you need to set that up beforehand, but it's really simple to do. The feature is called Line Slice Scaling, and you can find it in the options of your simple. Once you enable it, you will see these guides here. What these guides say is that everything outside them will be preserved, and the inside part will be used for scaling. So let's see a really simple example. We have this simple rounded button here. If I scale it without the 9 slice scaling option, this is what would happen. So what we can do is enable the 9 slice option and move the guides close to the edges of our button. Now when we drag it to expand it, our corners stay intact. If there are some more elements in the button, uh, for example some text, you need to move these guides in a place where they won't distort the text. For example, if I use the guides I did before, this is what would happen. Remember that whatever is in the inside area of the guides will be used for scaling. So let's move the guides a little bit more and see what happens now. Everything stays intact. Perfect. The other great thing about symbols is the flexibility they provide. Let's say you decide to change the design of uh, some of the icons you're using. If you didn't have symbols, you would have to do this by hand, which can be uh, quite tedious. With symbols, all you need to do is adjust the main symbol and everything else is updated. Fast and easy. But of course, you might want to adjust one of the symbols to be slightly different than the other ones. This is just a simple option on your symbols. You just need to make your symbol dynamic. Now with the direct selection tool, we can adjust this one symbol and the changes only apply to this one. If you keep adjusting the original symbol, only the changes that weren't adjusted will go through on this one. As you can see, symbols can make our lives so much easier. Symbols are great for teams as well. So you have several files of your design elements in a central place, and everyone else on the team can load those files on their own documents. Unfortunately, there's a limitation in the time of this video. Once symbols are used in a document, they are stored there and are not updated dynamically. So if, for example, another designer makes a change to the template document, your document won't be updated to the new symbol. You would have to replace the old one with the adjusted one. Let's hope that this will be fixed in new versions. Another little tip when uh, creating symbols. If elements need to be in a specific position, like our text here, you can add some guides to your symbols. As you can see here, I have a line with no stroke, which is invisible to the design, but very helpful when having to align my text to the symbol. Next up is the Appearance and Graphic Style panel. These are panels often overlooked by people, but they can be incredibly powerful. They allow you to create complex effects and keep them in an editable parametric state. So you can keep refining your design without making any commitments, and most importantly, you can just keep applying it to other objects with a single click. Super easy and helpful. This is exactly how these tabs are made. By just changing the style, I can have an enabled or disabled state. And I can also change the text and the button will dynamically change based on the width of the text. Let's see how we can create this kind of button. Let's first type out our text. Use the font and size you prefer for your text and save that as a character style. That way you can apply it to new text and have the exact same characteristics as your style. Now let's uh, start building our effect. Think of the appearance panel 
is a way to stack up effects in order to create a more complex effect. What we're going to do is really simple, and it's how most of the effects in the appearance panel start. We're going to first color our text, then convert our type into a rectangle, and stack that underneath our text. Finally, we will add a stroke on top of it all. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is to get rid of all color from our text. So we go to the characters option here and get rid of the fill color. I know the character option doesn't look like uh, something that contains more options, but now you do. The reason we do that is because if our characters contain color, in some cases, that color doesn't go through when applied to a new piece of text. So now we cannot see anything from our text. What we need to do is find a way to apply some color to it. To do that, we just add a new fill from here and pick the color we need. Now, in order to do the background, we will create a new fill. This will add a new layer on top of our text. Now, in order to convert this to a box, we add a new effect. The effects you see here are basically all the regular effects that can be accessed from this menu here. We select the Convert to Shape option, and then Rectangle. Type in uh, 5 and 5, and click OK. Let's see how that works. First off, this is on top of our text, so let's move that underneath. Now, as you can see here, what we have is a dynamic box. It's using whatever we type as the basis of the box, and then adds whatever values we added. We added uh, 5 pixels, so you can see here we have uh, 5 more pixels. Now, as you can see here, there's some ghosting. This uh, shouldn't be part of the workflow, but apparently there's no other way for us to align the pixels right now. So what you will see now is a complete hack, but it works we're going to add a twist effect. This will jiggle the pixels in the right place. No need to repeat this, this is a complete hack. If you're not uh, interested in uh, pixel accuracy, you can forgo this step completely. When we go out of the pixel view, everything renders out correctly, no matter if the effect is applied or not. But let's move on. The reason the box works no matter what we type is because our site is set to relative. If we had chosen absolute, we would have a rectangle with specific dimensions. Let's go back to the relative option. The box is slightly off-center, so we will add another effect, which will basically nudge the box where we want it to go. As you can see, we can start piling up effects to start creating more and more complex designs. Now that we're all set up with our background box, all we need to do is add a stroke around it. To do that, we just add a stroke layer and basically repeat the same process as before. We're going to convert the text to rectangle, give it the same dimensions as before, and then move it slightly to the right position. Unfortunately, the twist effect doesn't work here, so we will be one pixel off on our stroke. This is annoying, but unfortunately, something we can't get rid of. This is a limitation of the appearance options. The only way to do this precisely is to have the box with a stroke as a symbol. That way, everything will be aligned correctly. Here, I chose convenience rather than precision. But if it was a final design, I would probably do it as a symbol. Now, all we need to do is drag it in the graphics style panel, and we have it as an effect we can keep applying to new text. As you can see, it's quite flexible, and you can get a design really, really fast. As I told you before, you can create some complex effects with the Appearance panel. For example, we could recreate this whole dropdown with the Appearance panel. The arrow is something really simple to do. 
we create a fixed rectangle. Then we apply a free distort to it and adjust it a little bit with transform. The only limitation here is that the move effect in the transform panel is not relative. That means that if you have a really long word, you need to adjust this number manually. Not a big deal, but you lose some of the flexibility of the appearance panel. Either way, it's really, really flexible. And now that you know how it works, you can pick and choose the method that works the best for you. And that's all there is to know. With just these really simple steps, you can create interfaces really fast without losing any flexibility. Play around with them and see how you can incorporate these steps into your designs. If you would like me to dive deeper into a specific subject, just let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to cover it in a new video in the future. Talk soon!